Hello everyone, my name is Tian Yu Li. I will give a presentation on a survey I did this quarter on semantic segmentation. So what is semantic segmentation? In short, it is pixel-wise labeling based on semantic or language meaning. If you look at the picture here, different from classification and object detection, semantic segmentation is simultaneously recognizing the object and segmenting the object shape. It is a way of mimicking how human understand the scene. This survey mainly focuses on image semantic segmentation. Semantic segmentation has tons of applications like autonomous driving, which you want to know the exact location of a pedestrian, like the medical analysis for recognizing tumor, and there are many others. There are two main approaches to semantic segmentation on images. Traditional methods using graphical model and traditional machine learning algorithms with features. The other one is the deep learning approach using convolutional neural networks. First, I will introduce the conditional random field approach. It is set to replace the Markov random field approach, which only cares about the local neighbors but losing the big pictures of the image. In 2004, He proposed multi-scale CRF, which uses regional feature and the global feature together. Regional feature is like in the picture, sky pixel is usually above the ground pixel. Global feature is like a sky pixel are usually at the top of the image. They combine the two features with the local classifier into a restricted Boltzmann machine and chain with Gibbs sampling. However, using Gibbs sampling is inefficient and it can only handle a small number of classes. That's why Taxon CRF was proposed in 2006. It uses Taxon map and shape filter response to capture dependencies between pixels, like two Taxons usually showed up in the same region. The model emphasizes chaining accuracy, which reduced training time to five hours compared to over 10 hours from multi-scale CRF, but still keep the same accuracy. The drawbacks for CRF is that it is usually computationally heavy. Shorten et al. proposed semantic text on forest in 2008. They first created a semantic text on map using a random forest. On the map, they create a histogram for the taxon. Then this histogram of taxon are being used as input to another random forest as a classifier to make predictions. It achieves 66.9% pixel accuracy and five times faster training speed. Another example is the single histogram class model proposed in 2008 by Shroff et al. It is the average of all taxon distribution across training images, which captures both local and global features. The authors also combine RGB, HOG, and taxons into a random decision forest classifier. It achieves 69.9% pixel-wise accuracy on the Microsoft version two dataset. Overall, random decision forest have a more efficient chaining process than the CRF. And then we enter the deep learning era. Feature-based methods focus on extracting features from deep layers. The forerunner deep learning method on semantic segmentation is the fully convolutional network. It was modified from the famous VGG network. By replacing the last few layers to convolutional layers, as shown at the bottom picture here, the, the output becomes a heat map also, skip connection is introduced here. The basic idea is to sum the upsample layers with previous layers so that the upsample layers can retain some information before the downsample. It achieves 62.2% mean IOU on Pascal 2012 dataset. UNET uses very similar idea as FCN. It, aim it aims for medical image segmentation specifically. It introduces a more aggressive skip connection, which it connects layer in a wider range. The connection layer are concatenated instead of sum, unlike in the FCN. It becomes the most popular baseline method in medical fields. 
Next is the context-based method, which considers the pixel within a spatial context other than just local features. Representative works include the deep lab family. Here we focus on the deep lab version two. Its pipeline is shown in the bottom left here. It uses dilated convolution network to capture a larger field of view for each pixel in the network. Dilated layer is like the middle picture here. Instead of filtering the neighbor pixel, it filters the skip neighbors. ASPP is a combination of dilated convolutional layers. And at the end, they use dense CRF to refine the output results. The accuracy increases 17% compared to the FCN. Another example is the pyramid scene parsing network or the PSP net in 2017 by Zhao et al. The PSP net first extracts a feature map using ResNet. It then proposed the pyramid pooling module, which used four dilated convolution to pool four different copies of the feature map. The dilated rate decreases from bottom to the top. So it is like a pyramid. And then the four layers concatenate back with the feature map and produce the output. It achieves a mean IOE of 82.6% in the Pascal 2012 dataset. Parallel deep learning methods are the approaches where the researchers uses two or more separate networks running parallel to process different features and then combine the result at the end. An example is a dual attention network proposed by Fu et al. in 2019, which utilizes self-attention mechanisms. If you look at the picture here, a rest net will first process the input image with dilated convolution. The output would then be divided into two copies and processed by two parallel attention modules. One focuses on the spatial attention of the image, while the other focuses on the channel feature attention of the image. The mean IOU for Pascal 2012 testing set is 82.6%. Another example is the gated SCNN proposed by Tikikawa et al. in 2019. It divides the network into a regular stream and a shape stream that specifically deals with boundaries. The regular stream is just a rest net with dilated convolution layers. In the shape stream, the authors introduce the gated convolutional layers. Each gate uses the high level feature to control the information passing into the lower level feature to remove noise and help reinforce boundary information in the shape stream. The output of the two layers are then combined together with ASPP. It achieves 82.8% in the cityscapes test set. There are a couple of interesting future directions for semantic segmentation. A combination of deep learning and traditional method like CRF can outperform deep learning alone. Another is weekly supervised learning. It is labor intensive for labeling good data in semantic segmentation, since every object has different shapes. So if we have a network that can use weak labels, like a rough bounding mask to still get a good segmentation result, that will save a lot of time and money. Another direction could be to consider time sequence context instead of instead of just spatial context. Human eye accepts frame in a continuous stream manner. Having time context could be another enforcement for segmentation. Next direction could also be point cloud segmentation. It will be, it will be extremely helpful to create a semantic map during robot navigation or doing something like semantic slam. That's all, thank you.